Um, okay, so I think the uh, the recommended uh, way to begin a session, according to the book, I believe, is to start by asking the players questions. And I have uh, three questions prepared that I would like you guys to answer. Mm. And that will indicate uh, where the uh, session begins. Okay, my first question is, um, of the two of you, whose idea was it to steal the beer truck? His. Okay, it's mine. <laughs> so I... Rocco's, Rocco's idea was to steal the beer truck. Yeah, um, I had to. I had no choice in the matter. Um, it was the only way I was going to convince... Um, someone, but uh, mean, yeah, that I mean business, exactly. I had to get in, I had to get in and, uh, uh, to this group, and, and this is how I had to do it. I had to steal a beer truck, and I had to deliver it or something. Okay, so that's the, actually my second question. Where are you taking the beer truck? I'm taking it to, uh, Madman, um, Rufus, for delivery. Okay, so you're taking it to some guy named Rufus to... Are you trying to, like, uh, infiltrate his gang or something? Oh, uh, yeah, totally, yeah. I, I, I need to get in on this guy because I need to get some information about uh, either my latest bounty or case. Okay. Mm. All right. Or maybe, actually, this guy is my bounty, and this is uh, the way I can get through the doors because he's got, like, a gang kind of, right? So mm. he's expecting a delivery, so I, I hijack the truck, and I'm going to be the delivery man. And so, and Anna is your backup muscle to deal with the gang when you take down the bounty. <laughs> exactly. I'm what's, I'm what's in the truck instead of beer. <laughs> instead of beer. We got so rid like of all the beer. Like open the tap and they go like, there's no beer coming out. And then a fist just bursts through the back of the tank. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting ahead of us. You're getting ahead of us. My butt. Okay, um, but my, my, my third and final question for you guys is, you, okay, so you guys, you have the truck. You're driving it to meet up with Rufus. Who is currently chasing you? Probably the police. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what? We planned this. Because these guys, guys are an illegal criminal gang. We stole the truck in front of the police station so that the police would start chasing us. They come across this gang. The police occupies the gang while we go and get the bounty. Well, so you just we shut down a major criminal operation. You guys just just crashed through like a, a driving checkpoint or something, and now you have a, a massive police chase. But it's all part of the plan, you're saying? Yes. Well, <laughs> part a part of her plan. Uh. <laughs> that's actually that's the question. It's, so, but Rocco, you're the one driving. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, actually, that's probably good. Your hustle stat is higher, so you're probably a better driver than. Uh, is. Anne doesn't have bionic arms. She has bionic legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, the, we our, our our story begins with uh, Rocco, uh, bounty hunter Rocco Shapiro, and his uh, partner in crime fighting eastbound and down, tooling down the uh, the the streets of the city uh, with a bunch of squad cars in pursuit. Uh, uh, <laughs> on way to meet. Where are you meeting, Rufus? Like. Uh, uh, this is at the docks. Okay, head for the yeah, docks. This is, this is a shipment. This is a. Uh, he said he's. This has got supposed to have like some goods or whatever, the re really good goods or whatever. And he's got to ease to ship it out. So. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a shipment of beer. Rufus really really needs it, <laughs> and uh, he's he's expecting it. He is not expecting it to come with a police escort, but no, he is not. expecting it. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, you guys are uh, you guys have made it as far as like the factory district. Uh, I, we, we, what year was Prohibition, anyways? That was back in the twenties. Twenties. That's way way earlier. However, mm -hmm. I did find out that uh, in certain states, uh, certain brands of beer could not be transported across state lines because it was technically bootlegging. And there you go. Yes. Where were we? Oh yes, in the middle of the best bad idea you've had in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You act as though we have bad bad ideas. <laughs> well, well, well you had that. several. You had several bad ideas for catching Rufus. This is just the best of the bad bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well, uh, Rocco, your uh, your your plan to get the police to follow you has worked very well. In fact, it's worked <laughs> a little too well. And you think that you're going to have to slow these guys down, or at least lose a couple of these cars, if Rufus is going to even 
open the gates of the hideout to you. Right. So uh, you're currently uh, he- you're, you're let's see you're about um, I, I guess you're about one a district over from uh, from the docks. You're going through like the factory warehouse area. So uh, if you've got uh, if you got a plan to lose uh, lose a little bit of your police presence uh, now, would be a good time to do it. Well, I've got a big truck, right? So yeah. Um, if they're coming up on the sides, um, I don't oh, really want to. I'm I'm thinking that there should be a lot of crates in the back where I am, and I could Donkey Kong these guys. <laughs> well, that's um, true. Um, I, I don't really want to harm the police, though. I mean, because technically they're, you know, yeah. I yeah, know they're, they're probably of, half of these guys, right? Yeah, they're, so, <laughs> part, they're part of the plan, after all, yeah. Yeah. No, you're just looking to slow them down, kind of divert them temporarily. But, yeah. Uh, I, I like I, I what I want to do is probably make it a little bit of a chase. If I if it's if it's too much, like if like by what by what means do you mean it's too much? Like is there like a helicopter over me too? Like what's going on here? Not not yet, not yet, but you're looking at about uh eight, possibly ten police cars and you Ooh. didn't really want to bring more than five. Oh. <laughs> All right. Basic maneuvers. Well in that case I guess we're gonna have to do some uh Dukes of Hazard here. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to slam on the brakes and go down one of those se- uh, side alleys as I'm... <laughs> with a giant okay, wheel. so you're, you're, you're just going to uh, try and do... You're going to try and do a hairpin... What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chicky, I, I interrupted you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then while we're going into the alley, I'll just shove a bunch of crates out the back so you know, the alley's totally blocked. They have to find okay. another way around. All right, so that's going to be uh, to do a hairpin turn in a fully loaded beer truck is going to be Rocco's going to have to roll two d six and add hustle. Sure. That'd be eleven. Beautiful. Ten or higher, you'd say uh, full six su- full success as uh, Rocco. Goes into goes into a skid and then slams on the gas and whips down between two warehouses. Uh, okay, so and and you are trying to keep your feet and chuck the beer, beer crates out the back while the car is doing like a ninety degree turn. So that's going to be, uh, I guess that'll be plus might to keep your feet keep your feet and throw crates. Yep. So two d six plus might. Yep. Okay, that is an eleven. <laughs> Also eleven. Cool. Okay. So the the back of the truck opens opens up, and and, and standing there, she's uh, basically flanked by two cases by two towers of beer crates, and then just like Samson pushing over the pillars in the temple, she just shoves them out the back, <laughs> crashing to the pavement and on broken glass and, uh, and, and 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 crates. And um, let's see uh, what the so the police car, one of the police cars uh, hits the brakes but can't stop, goes right through the broken glass and shreds all four of its tires, further blocking the alleyway. Uh, the others manage to pull out in time and start taking alternate routes trying to cut you off. So, uh, so Rocco, you're currently going down a, a very narrow alleyway. You're pretty sure you've lost your side mirror on the passenger side. <laughs> cool. uh, <laughs> but, uh, currently can't see any, any, any police. Uh, what are you going to do next? I'm going to keep uh, going and um, and try to get back on the main road, uh, as long as there's mm-hmm. no obstacles in the way. Okay. And, uh, uh, Anne, are you going to be uh, closing the door again? or? Yeah, I'm going to be closing the door and preparing for my ambush. Cool. Mm. Okay. There's a I, huge I... keg that I could uh, fit inside. <sighs> oh, my. <laughs> Climb into the keg. Okay. If there's any, uh, if if I'm, if I get back on the main road, uh, mm-hmm. and I don't see any cops, I'm gonna start blowing the horn, getting some like attention. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. To fit, find your way out of the labyrinth of warehouses, I want you to make a roll plus brains. Ooh. So you don't get uh, turned around in a dead end. <laughs> Got eleven again. <laughs> oh, no. You guys are hot. What can I say? You guys are freaking hot today. I hope you keep rolling like this when when when, when the shooting starts. Oh no. <laughs> I hope we don't. That's when it gets interesting. Oh boy. Okay. 
All right. No, wait, that's not what uh, I mean. <laughs> okay, well, I said, uh, Rocco, the, 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 you, managed to get, you managed to get the car out of the tight alley nice, nice and neatly. Uh, you uh, go through a gap in a chain link fence, drive under a couple of bridge supports, and you're back on the main road. Sweet. Yeah, you, you can, uh, looking back, you can see some of the police cars are still working their way through uh, the warehouses trying to find you, but you lay on the horn and you already see a couple of them uh, follow you out through the gap in the fence, but uh, fewer of them. Mm -hmm. So it looks like you managed. The others have either gotten lost in the labyrinth of warehouses, or they're having to turn around and get back on the road. I just stare at the road in my angry <laughs> eyes. <laughs> okay, so the plan the plan is back on the rails. Uh, you guys are headed straight for the docks to uh, to to, uh, to a sea Rufus. Okay, so uh, I guess you uh, pull again. You finally pull off the main road into a, a seedy dockside area. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to uh, run right through any barricades they may have set up. So they might have like a little, uh, probably you know where you would stop your car to kind of like you know get inspected or at least ask. Mm -hmm. And they probably have that uh -huh. taken over for whatever reason. But I'm just going to run right through it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. But uh, so so yeah. Just there's a security checkpoint right outside the dock area, and you just drive right through it. <laughs> Like I said, there, there's a oh, there's a sleepy security guard there who is rudely awoken and dashed out of the booth <laughs> just as you go drive through it, and uh, head hey, hey, hey. Still give the look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got, you pull up uh, of a uh, kind of a, a ship that is currently uh, loading, mm -hmm. and uh, so you the car the truck screeches to a stop. And there are wow. a bunch of guys. <laughs> Gear her down. <laughs> yeah. So there's a bunch of guys, tough looking guys in you know, leather jackets and sunglasses, hanging out waiting for you. And then uh, up behind a, a, a stack of uh, being loaded crates, uh, Rufus uh, appears around the edge. And there's a ominous guitar chord as he appears on the scene. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so Rock, Rock just uh, gets out of the uh, cab and nonchalantly walks over. Rufus is like, "Well, two minutes early. You got the stuff. Got stuff. So, all right, let's take a look. Check the back." <laughs> <laughs> so, Rocco and his guys uh, go to the back and I start. The door. Yeah, so I knock in the door. And uh, doors about to sw doors swinging open, mm -hmm. and uh, inside is like uh, crates of beer and a big keg. Check the keg; <laughs> it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so Rocco shrugs and nods to one of his boys, who goes over and turns the tap on the keg, and nothing comes out. And that sort of is bust out through the keg and punches the goon. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is. Totally, what happens? <laughs> I'm not even going to make your roll on that, to be honest. I, I would assume you'd set up, set up the keg to be for easy opening. So yeah, the fist comes out, and the goon goes flying backwards into a bunch, bunch of his buddies, and and just tears her way out of the keg. <laughs> and then, and at that moment, I just like pull out my biggest gun and uh, aim it at Rufus. Don't make a move, punk. <laughs> Rufus shouts out, "It's a setup! Scatter!" <laughs> and a bunch of these guys start, head, start pushing over crates for cover and drawing their own guns. And that's so the police like, coming? Oh, you, you, you can hear the sirens coming. They're not there yet, though. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you, can, you already hear the sirens, the sirens in the distance closing in. You assume Why not? That this, pardon? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm going to assume the security guard managed to go pick through the wreckage of his booth and find the phone that allows him to call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the moment that the, the guys start getting uh, uh, ready to shoot and fire and whatnot, uh, I, I'm keeping my eye on Rufus. And where's he headed to? Uh, he's heading for the ship. Oh, I'm going for him. Yo, you chase him, chase him down. <laughs> Handle it. <laughs> 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 and I chase after Rufus. Yeah. Mm. All right, I guess I look at all the guys out in front of me, and I'm like, 20 of you and one of me? Huh, that just ain't fair. <laughs> Oh, I said. Um, okay, so uh, 
Rufus is Rufus is going to book it. Rocco, you're going to chase him. Roll hustle to uh, to, to chase. Uh, I got a ten. Ten. So, All right. You are you are def you are definitely in chase. You're 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 hot on his hot on his trail. Um, get back here, Rufus. Yeah. I've got to, I've got to, I've got, I've got to make a living. I've got to pay my, I've got to pay my uh, latest uh, phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so, okay, so, uh, and you are currently facing a gang of guys armed with uh, various, like some of them have like crowbars and loading hooks and stuff. And uh, I'll, I'll, let's see, I'm going to say the, um, they're going to do, a, there are two harm small gang. But since you count as a small gang, it's actually an equal fight. Normally, if a gang outnumbers you, uh, they get plus one of their rolls and you get minus one. Mm -hmm. But uh, since you have that move, which lets you count as a gang, uh, there are no penalties for you. Awesome. <laughs> That's why I was like, full confidence. Like, <laughs> yeah. 20 of them? Uh, bad luck for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, okay, so let's see. There's about uh, seven, or eight, seven or eight guys uh, coming at you. So, uh, Anne, are you going to take the hit or get out of the way? Oh, I'm going to take the hit. Okay, so taking the hit is a basic move a character can do. And uh, in this case, you are simply going to attempt to shrug off the damage. So that's you roll plus might. And that is a 10. Well, uh, ten, uh, 10 plus, uh, basically the guys come at you with, uh, they s several guys slam you with crowbars, and a couple of guys are throwing punches, and they're just clanging off your torso. And then I'm just standing there like, seriously? <laughs> That's why I just, uh, you know, take two of the guys by their collars and throw them into two other guys. Okay, well, you're, that's delivering a beat down, and that is also a plus might uh, roll. Uh, and that is a 12. Yikes. Okay, so uh, on a 10 plus, you deal damage to the enemy. Uh, in this case, um, are you fighting unarmed or with your wrench? I'm fighting with my wrench. Okay. So it is... Oh, I guess I'm actually, fighting actually, unarmed at this particular moment. Yeah, but you said you were throwing guys, so we'll count throwing guys as a fall because you're launching them into the air. Mm. Okay. So that's... Uh, plus, so uh, you're... You're throwing them, I'm, I'm assuming you're not throwing them like higher than 20 feet in the air, despite being incredibly strong. Um, Probably. So I'll be, when I'm touching, because you rolled higher than 10, you have the option to do the following. To deal plus one harm, disarm your targets, do a blind hold or disabling, give or take something your target is holding or wearing, or avoid any counterattack from this. You know, I think I'll deal great harm. Okay, so you're doing plus two harm to the gang. Now, I'm since doing four harm to the gang, actually. Well, no, we're, we're, no, we're doing it as, 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 a, as a fall, which does one harm. Uh, I'm a three harm gang small, normally. Oh, so. I forgot about that. So yeah. you're a three harm gang? I'm a three harm gang, just by myself. Okay, so yeah, you basically hunt these guys into their friends and other chain. Because their leader has split, uh, this gang can only, can only will, will, will scatter after it takes two harm. You've just done four harm. So these guys are scattering, but they're scattering because they're all scattered to the four corners of this dock. <laughs> I am going to be chasing down these guys for a beatdown. Um, <laughs> As a comes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Rocco, you're, like I said, you're hot on his tail, but uh, Rocco's, uh, Rufus's rather, Rufus's buddies are, uh, are shooting at you, so if you want to stay on his tail, you're going to have to keep your cool because you're acting despite an imminent threat or working under pressure. Okay. So, depending on how you choose to deal with this, you can roll any of your stats. Mm. So, if you power through, you use might. If you're acting fast, you use hustle. If you're quick thinking, you're using brains. If you're using mental fortitude, you're using soul. If you're using charm and social grace, you're using smooth. So, yeah. how are you um, getting through this withering hail of gunfire to keep on your, to keep on your target? I say acting fast. Okay, I'm, so I'm trying to keep up and trying to keep my footwork in, in order, right? So I'm kind of running. Okay, you're just going full tilt. Full tilt. All right, so, oh yeah, roll plus hustle. Sure. 
Um, I just rolled a nine, but I have a plus two. Well, nine plus two is eleven. So basically, low. He's, Rocco just lowers his head, his trench coat flying in the breeze, bullets whizzing past his head, and just his arms pumping away like 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 crazy. And uh, Rufus has gotten. He's he's only managed to get as far as that. He knows he can't make it up the gangplank before you tackle him. So he jumps onto like, the loading pallet that's loading onto the ship. Yeah. And pulls pulls out a gun, shoots the lever, and the pallet starts going up. He's going to try and get loaded onto the ship with the cargo. I want to uh, I, I want to as he's like going up, uh -huh. I want to uh, jump up on the uh, box as like he's going up there, and try and tackle him right into the water. Okay, uh, so again you're you're uh, hustling again. Hustle so, again. Uh, hustle okay. again. Ooh. Seven. Okay, seven is a partial success. So you don't quite make, you were trying to just leap onto the pallet with uh, Rufus to take him on. So instead, you have to settle for leaping up and grabbing the edge of the pallet and trying to scramble on. Um, of course, Carolyn pulls back and you see that the pallet is going up much faster than you anticipated. You're now dangling several feet above the ground, bullets whizzing past you, hanging on by your hands yeah. while uh, Rufus is trying to kick you off. Meanwhile, uh, and uh, the, guys, the guys have realized that uh, crowbars and fists aren't really working on you, so uh, they are retreating to cover and opening fire on you with pistols and shotguns. Uh, how are you responding to this? Oh, man. I'm going to be jumping up on... Well, they're there hiding behind crates and uh, shipping mm -hmm. containers, right? Yep. I am totally jumping up on some shipping containers and then coming down on them in, uh, you know, wrestling move type style. Okay. All right. Moves. Sure. And uh, so you'll be using uh, your bionic legs to uh, you roll. You'll be rolling hustle, but you're doing a leap, so you get to get the plus two from your legs to counteract your zero and hustle. Cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And that is the first failure of the game. No, that's a seven, actually. That's not a failure. Okay, uh, seven. Partial success. Partial success. Okay, so... Um, so, you, so it's easy. Um, you manage to get, uh, again, it's kind of similar to what Rocco just did. You do the jump, but you kind of land half on the container, half not. And uh, so with a loud, loud clang. So uh, got, so you're, it's not going to be a surprise maneuver anymore. Got, but uh, people are already moving to try and uh, they're trying to uh, do suppressing pop fire to pin you down on top of the uh, shipping container. And rolls onto a, onto a back wall bullets whiz past your face. Okay. And what? Um, well, I think it's just like so you were leaping the shipping container. You're trying to leap on top of it and then drop down. So you made the oh, okay. leap. You made the leap, but you only made, but you didn't, but you didn't make the, you didn't stick the landing. So you just kind of end up rolling on top of the shipping container, flopping onto your back, and bullets are kind of whizzing past you like this. Fair enough. I'm gonna but try to rock. Get. I'm gonna try to rock the shipping container on top of them. Okay. All right. So that'll be uh, might. And that is another seven. Another seven. Okay, well, you get the container. Well, you get the container rocking, and it falls over. Uh, but uh, the guy, the uh, the goons scram scramble scramble out of the way. But uh, all their gunfire hits the side of the container, and none of it reaches you. So, you know, you you are behind basically full cover cover from the shipping container while the guys are emptying their guns in your direction. Uh, Rocco. Uh, like I said, Rufus is, is now trying to stamp on your hands and kick you in the face and get you off the pallet, and the pallet keeps going higher, so that would be really bad for you if it happened. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, I'm going to say... <laughs> I, I'm going to pull out my... Uh, I'm going to have one hand and just whip out my, uh, my mm -hmm. revolver, mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to try and shoot the uh, wire that's keeping us up there uh, and say, you're all washed up, chump. <laughs> <laughs> and try to shoot it so that we both land in the water. Oh, okay. So, so you're not shooting like I, I'm kind of picturing it as being like um, a wire from each corner meeting at the top. So you're not shooting the one at the top. You're shooting the ones over here, so it'll tip. Yes. Okay. So you're not because <laughs> I was just like you crazy fool. <laughs> 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 but no. Okay. Um, all right. Make the shot. So that'll be um, again. This is also going to be, I think, keeping your cool because you're you're dealing with gravity and gunfire and someone kicking you in the face. Right. 
So I guess so, in this case, I'd be using my brains, think, think, the, uh, thinking. thinking. Yeah. Uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight. It's a partial success. So your uh, your your thirty-eight pistol pistol it uh, it makes Rufus step back and it wings the wire, but it doesn't go all the way through it. So it starts. It's kind of like you know fraying, but it's not breaking all the way through yet. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah, it's gotten uh, Rufus to back off. He's now uh, picked up one of the crates off of a heavy crate off of the stack, and he's kind of going over there to try and drop it on you. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm going to uh, try to, uh, if, if I can't get up there again, I mean, I, I don't want to make another shot, so I'm going to try and uh, get myself up on the, uh, mm -hmm. the platform with him. Okay, so that'll be hustle. Okay. Yep, hustle with him. All right, that's uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, well, the burst of adrenaline, Rocco pulls himself up onto the pallet, and uh, and as just you're getting up, he wings the crates at you, you duck it, flies over your head, and the camera watches it fall all the way to the ground and smash. <laughs> you, you guys are now about like 30 or 40 feet in the air. All right. Uh, and not on a wavering platform that's just about to like, you know, much. snap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, Anne... You are hunkered down behind a toppled uh, cargo container with a bunch of guys shooting at you. Got a plan? No, but it's never stopped me before. True. How close are the police at this point? Uh, the sirens are are getting uh, much are getting much closer now. They'll probably be here in another couple of uh, another couple of actions. Give a few minutes. They're, like I said, they're, they're not here yet. Awesome. I'm going to keep up the noise. Uh, you know, get keep them shooting so that they don't hear the shot sirens. Uh, keep clanging around shipping containers so they don't realize. Oh. Kind of stuff. So I'm going to be picking up uh, picking up any pieces of metal I can and pretending to throw it at them, but really trying to make as much noise as possible. Oh, so you're just kind of like dash. You're okay. So I see the image of Anne is like running from container to container, lobbing stuff at the guys to keep them shooting. But she's not actually trying to hit them. She's trying to keep them focused on her and firing so they don't hear the sirens. Yeah. That is a good idea. I'm trying to hit the crates. And I'm trying to hit the crates and the shipping containers by them, so it makes even more noise. So all they hear is like boom, 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 boom. Okay. From them shooting uh, and me throwing shit. Okay. Um, this is uh, keeping you cool because uh, you're you're again like Rocco. You're running through a hail of bullets uh, and and you're making yourself uh, vulnerable when you're throwing the stuff. So uh, what stat are you rolling for to keep you cool? Uh, what stats can I roll? Any stat, provided you can justify it. I think this counts as brains. Quick thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is a seven. <laughs> God damn. Okay, that is a seven. Uh, unfortunately, let's see, well, you, again, you, you, you're keeping up a pretty steady barrage, and you got them distracted. But uh, unfortunately, as you're as you fling yourself, you stay out a little bit too long, and you get clipped for uh, two harm. What does my armor do with that now? Okay, well I think our armor works is that it absorbs uh, a certain amount of damage. So you have one armor from being topped with leather, and you have another armor from your jacket. I have two armor from my jacket and one from tougher than leather. Yeah, let me just uh, check something. For so a I have three armor. Okay. How does armor work in a pop-up world, Jason? Armor? I... Yep. Um. I think in a pop-up world it's just a soak. So yeah. someone has to do four damage it, it, to get one absorbs. arm. You have three arms. Yeah. Armor. I think okay. Absorbs, so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't um, know. I don't know about this game though. Okay. Uh, Chicky, I just checked the tough guy gear. The heavy leather jacket is one armor, not two. Okay, so the two armor is me already adding in the tougher than leather. I'll put one plus one so I remember in the future. Good idea. Okay, so uh, you, you've, you, you've, got, you've gotten clipped, but um, you pretty much, uh, you pretty much absorb, the, absorb the damage. But uh, I, I just see that you basically wing something and... Uh, you just basically take like a half, half, half a step in one direction and you get clipped and knocked to the ground. Yeah. I'll have to buff that out later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rocco, 
Rufus is uh, coming. Rufus, Rufus is coming out swinging. He's taking. He's uh, he's uh, swinging a big meaty fist at your head. Uh, you're going to take the hit or get out of the way. Okay, get out of the way. Okay, so that will be hustle. Got a nine. Okay, on a nine. You can either choose to take uh, half the harm from the punch or take no harm, but the DJ gets to pick uh, something that happens to you. I'll take the harm. Okay. Now let me see. Um, see, he's throwing a fist, so fists normally do zero damage. Okay. But if he's choosing to inflict great harm and do one damage, so half the harm is a minimum of one, so uh, you take one harm. Okay. So he basically lands a, a pretty solid punch on Rocco, Rocco's jaw and knocks him back into the crates. And, yeah, and then just again, he tries, you know, wrapping to wrapping his hands around your throat and choking you while he tries to push you towards the edge. Well, I'm just gonna kick him off me. Oh, so you're gonna deliver uh, a beat down? Um, not really. Um, actually, uh, because um, I'm only trying to get him away from me. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I'm gonna give him. I want to give him a bit of an ultimatum. Okay, well, it says you're trading blows with an enemy in melee combat, so you roll plus might. Sure. I got 11. Okay, 11. So you basically do a thing where you just like slam your forearms down, down, down on his forearms and headbutt him in the face and knock him backwards. Yeah, so I sort of want to like, like pu push him away from me, but not, uh, but not do any harm to him. Just kind of like. Oh yeah, you've, you, knock you've, knocked, you've, knocked, you've knocked him back and, da and dazed him. Is it? Uh, what's your ultimatum? So, anyways, I, I just get up and I wipe blood from my mouth and he just punched, and I say, "You can take. We can do this the hard way." The hard way. You're coming with me either way. <laughs> we can do this the hard way or the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the hard way. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Okay. So no, I got, I got you. So um, are you trying to basically. get what you want, a lot, or get in his face? Uh, I'm going to. I, I get what I want. Okay. Well. Mm, well, getting what you want is to having leverage to uh, manipulate somebody. I think it's probably more like getting to your face. You're attempting to get someone to act through the violence or the threat of violence. Okay, that's probably a better one, yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, roll your plus might. All right. Four. <laughs> Four. I got a big uh, Rufus just kind of sneer, sneers at you. He's like, you hit like a girl, Shapiro. I'll take the hard way. And he tackles you into the crates. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you're, um, you're, uh, da you're, down, on, you're down on the ground um, with bullets, wi bullets whizzing, all, whizzing, all, whizzing all around you. You, can, you hear uh, the sound of uh, police cars cr driving over the wreckage of the, of the security checkpoint that you guys crashed through on the way in. Uh, what's your move? Police, police, they're shooting at an innocent, harmless little girl like me. I've been shot. Right. Arrest these men. <laughs> I'm not bleeding. But... Also, they stole some money of mine. I should probably get back. <laughs> okay, um, we're going to say this is uh, getting what you want. You're, you're, you're trying to manipulate the police with your, your charms. Uh, so you have to roll plus smooth. <laughs> Minus smooth. You have your minus one smooth. Okay, that is a six. So that's an XP. Yeah. Oh, I, I forgot. Uh, Rocco gets an XP for that four as well. And uh, okay, so you're just you're just basically playing the damsel in stress, like help me, help me. And uh, nobody's buying it, to be honest. Uh, the the police the police are here, but instead of rushing over to help you. They're basically uh, getting down behind their cars and trading shots with Rufus's gang. So, and I'm in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're pretty much in the middle of a war zone. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, uh, Rocco. Rufus is, uh, has you pinned against the crates, and he's reaching up and pulling like a, a board, like a, a cargo hook off one of the crates, and he's going to try and stick it through your head. <laughs> Um, you're going to take right. the hit or get out of the way? <laughs> um, I'm going to get out of the way. Okay, roll hustle. Um, I've got a 12. Beautiful. What do you do? Well, actually, I'm going to grab, reach up, grab that hook, 
and use the chain and sort of wrap it around his neck. Ah, so you've, you've taken, the, not only have you Counter. disarmed him, you, you, you've <laughs> taken the weapon for yourself. That's right. It was like, ah, God, ah, ah, drops, sure. drops to one knee. I just want to choke him out until he's a little bit easier to handle. Okay, he's uh, he's uh, he's struggling pretty pretty hard, and you real okay that you then realize that uh, when you're using both hands on the chain and the hook, you realize you've dropped your thirty-eight on the ground, and Rufus is going for it. He's trying to get enough slack that he can reach your thirty-eight. Oh, um, shit! All right, I'm just gonna kick it. <laughs> kick it away. Oh, I can get another one of those. I can get another one of those. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you're uh, acting under an imminent threat. Is this is this uh, hustle or brains? Um, well, I got to be faster, I think. But okay, maybe. so you got to be faster than him. So roll plus hustle. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Okay. Well, you. Uh, okay, so you you managed to. Uh, you're, so you you kick you. Uh, he, Rafa gets his hand on the gun and you kick and you kick him right in the hand. And he lets out, lets out a very let out a very angry angry grunt, and he and he, his hand goes up and the gun goes off and passes right through the wire and the pallet dumps both of you into the bay. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> splash splash. Okay, uh, and you, uh, you 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 manage to crawl through the 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 rain of gunfire just in time to see Rocco and Rufus plummet in plummet into the bay. What are you doing? I'm out of the gunfire. Yes, you managed to like, kind of like belly crawl out from under the out from under the, under the gunfire. Well, it's not like I can jump in and swim out to save them. No. Uh, even if my engine could handle that, I would probably sink. Most likely. So you have a, a fear of water. <laughs> Not a fear of water. I actually quite like it, but it's it we don't get along water. anymore. Yeah. I guess the best thing I could do is steal a ship from the Coast Guard and uh, go at them with the flotation devices. Oh, you're just going to like look for the nearest um, boat, or flotation, yeah. boat or flotation device. Okay, do a roll plus brains. And that is a 14. Okay, yeah, yeah there's uh, a. Well, it's, it's the docks. There's plenty of like small craft and flotation devices around. Take your pick. Uh, I'm gonna go up to the coast guard boat. Uh, you know where the the guys are there, and I'm just gonna be like, "Yo, we're saving those people, or else." <laughs> They're like, the the coast guard's like, "What people? What's going on? What's all the gunfire?" Yeah, the gunfire is just small fry. We need to help those people. It's like I saw all the no more questions. It's like all the wow. It's like no more questions. Okay, so the Coast Guard boat moves out, uh, uh, moves out to the off to, off to the side of the docks, and uh, Rocco, you I want are, an underwater battle. Yes, you're currently battling underwater with uh, yeah. with, with Rufus. Ooh, slow punches. <laughs> okay. The choke move, you know, the whole like, you know, trying to. Yes, yeah, and uh, the, the, the hook and the chain are weighing you down, and you're sinking pretty fast. Uh, oh. You and Rufus are, are sinking, so um, what are you going to do? Ah, uh, well, I, I got to save him. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to try and unhook us both from the chain so I can, you know, he's my bounty. He's my, my bread and butter. I got to take him in. Okay, so you're keeping your cool by, uh, what, fast acting, quick thinking, mental fortitude? Probably, probably mental fortitude. I suppose. I, I don't know. Because um, for the most, because I'm trying, I'm trying to like. Uh, well, actually, powering through. I think, because I'm actually trying to get the stuff off of me and then swim up to the surface with with yep. this guy. Works. Right. Roll plus might. All right. Eleven. <laughs> hey man, it's just like yeah. okay. So so. Another, like a, a blow to the gut, a, 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 a slow punch to the gut. Rufus lets out a whole bunch of bubbles. <laughs> then you, push, you you throw away the hook and chain, put your arm around him, and head for the surface. You break the surface to see Anne coming over with the coast guard. So hey, my hair's like all in my face. And I'm like. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the cavalry is here. Anne brought the cavalry. 
pretty awesome. I, I just do a wave, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a big wave. So, yep, uh, we then uh, cut away to uh, Rufus's guys being led off in handcuffs, and uh, Rufus himself, you, Rocco, you got like a, a, to- a towel on you. And yeah. it's just there's a big, there's a rip, kind of a rip in, her, rip in her jacket. You can kind of see the chrome shining through a little bit. We, I probably got Rufus, uh, probably got Rufus like on the ground, like, and cops mm-hmm. are like coming over, and I'm like, he's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Back off. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 cops were like, it's like, one of the cops looks at you, he's like Shapiro, and the other guy goes, you owe me five bucks. <laughs> no, he says it to he says it to his partner. Oh, oh yeah, like, five bucks. Oh. He's like, well, we got the call about the stolen beer truck going crazy in the warehouse district. I knew it was you. <laughs> yeah, awesome. But, uh, oh yeah, they collect Rufus and they let you know that uh, the, their money will be uh, wired to you within uh, the next within the next eight hours. Pop out so, a cigarette, uh, and my, my 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 cigarette pack's like completely soaked. So I'm like, I'm <laughs> like I got this like like <laughs> limp <laughs> cigarette, and I'm trying to find a lighter. Got a light, <laughs> but it's not lighting. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of folds her arms and shakes her head. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a it's a job well done. So you guys can retire to uh, Rocco's estate, or rather his uh, his house out in. Uh, out, out, in the, out in the suburbs. So do I, like, do I have like, do I, how do I cash in the bounty? Well, I assume that uh, the 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 police. Uh, I'm I'm operating the assumption the police wire the money to a special account that you. Okay, have. that works. So, you know, I mean that way you don't uh, like if you brought in a fifty thousand dollar bounty and they just give it to you in cash, you'd probably get rolled on the way out the police station. <laughs> I probably had I probably had some deductions like on the actual thing. It's like you know property damage deducted one hundred dollars or five dollars and ten dollars. Your lump sum was like twenty five dollars, but it started at two hundred. You know, <laughs> yeah. something like that. You, you do have to pay for uh, four new cop car tires and uh, and 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 a uh, security checkpoint for the docks. <laughs> But you do get a free you do get a frequent customer discount. <laughs> Yay! All right, so uh, you guys are uh, retiring to uh, stately Shapiro Manor out in the burbs, and and you're correct. You do get you do have a, a bit of a, a ding from uh, those crowbars and bullets, so uh, you can make a call to uh, Mojo Gogo, your handy dandy mechanic friend. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I've had her working on something for me, like trying to track down my uh, my engine, the serial numbers from my engine parts, and see if we can track down my past that way. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give her a call and see what she's up to. Okay. So uh, yeah, if she, uh, you pick it up. She uh, she runs a, a small gym and rink in, uh, in in another part of town. So she just picks it up. She's like, "Yellow Mojo Go Go, what's what's going on?" Hey, Mojo it's eastbound. I have a dent to buff out. Ah, uh, damn. Not again. What, what was it this time? Playing in traffic? Bullet. One of those days, huh? You been helping that uh, psycho again? <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not a psycho. He's got my back when things get ugly, man. Uh, if you say so. All right, I'll get the tools and uh, come on over. Bring the case file. You got it. Chill so far. Yeah. So. So a lot of questions. Just ask questions. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of looks pensive as she hangs up the phone. Uh, Rocco, what are you doing? You're uh, you've. Uh, I, I get right back to my office uh, and I have the open file, mm-hmm. and I just close up the file and just throw it in the corner. Because yeah. to me, that's like. Whatever, this is another another deal done, right? But um, I go back and I, I start pulling I start pulling out uh, one of the, uh, a couple of files that uh, mm-hmm. from my previous you know life and I start thumbing through a couple and uh, you know just looking for clues or anything like that. And I'm mm-hmm. assuming like the reason why I took this bounty and the reason why I I I, I did mm-hmm. uh, the extreme is because there's a lead going on here, right? Right. And I've yeah, well, you, like so, you toss Rufus's file into this. There's a, there's a box there that says, you know, case closed, 
and there's like two files in it plus Rufus's. So yeah, <laughs> and so then you reach over to uh, the uh, one of the, to the large open case file bo box. It's like this stack of boxes that's taller than you. Yeah, and pull out another one and start thumbing through it. And you look over at the wall and you see all the pictures type of string. You have a little mini flashback. And it's just like it's like you can't keep doing this, Shapiro. You're gonna get some. You're gonna get your partner killed someday. Day, 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 day. <laughs> Those little girls didn't deserve to die. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have lit the gasoline truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just throw the next file on, on, on my desk and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're looking over at Rubus's picture and he's got like three or four different strings going off in different direct directions. You're just kind of stroking your chin. There's, there's like there's like a, a heavy bag and like a, a, a weight bench in the corner. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's never it's never indicated whether that's Anne's or yours. It's just like a communal, my yeah. communal workstation. Totally. Yeah. Maybe Anne brought it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, but it's just been moved to a corner, a corner of your office. Mm. So you hear a a motorcycle pull up outside, and it's uh, Mojo there. She's got her toolbox and the and the case oh, file. Roller skating everywhere. She's she, she's on the other side of town, man. She's not gonna roller skate across town. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, yeah. Well, you know, she's got her her uh, kind of skates hung over her shoulders, just in case. But she just uh, knocks on the door and then comes comes straight in. Knocking knocks on the door. On. I said she jumps through the open window. Yeah. Well, she's <laughs> knocks, on, knocks on the garage door is open. She just kind of knocks on the frame. She's like, she's like, and you decent. Uh, all my metal bits are covered. Close enough. It's like, uh, all right. Uh, well, you know the drill. Climb up on the uh, workbench. <laughs> I climb up on the workbench. You know, take off my shirt, show off yeah. my giant wheels. Yep, yeah, you're pretty much. You got this uh, chrome torso. With like you know pistons and like pipes going up over your shoulders and stuff like that. It's pretty bizarre. She's, she's just like, hey, you're, you're lucky. Could have hit a fuel line. So she just starts kind of <laughs> filing down a rough edge. It's like, so uh, what, so what was what, what was it what was it this time? He said a bullet. Who shot at you today? So far today. Uh, some gang down at the docks. What were we doing down there again? <laughs> yeah. uh, is what his name in the room? Is Rocco in the room? Uh, I well probably I if, I, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm in the room, I'm probably kicking a bag or something like that, getting in with yeah. angry and angry <laughs> frustrations. Yeah. Oh, so you're just working on Anne's workout equipment? Yeah. All right. So Anne has just asked you, no, why were we at the docks getting shot at? <laughs> um, payback. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Mojo just shakes her head. Ask the question. I always get the same answer. She gets out of cloth. <laughs> <laughs> she gets out of cloth and starts buffing the shot. She's like, it's just, just, just a graze. Uh, a couple of dents, I can probably get those out too. So you're getting worked on, and you, you guys, know, you guys hear uh, a car pull up. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Hang on. What, I, I wrote who was in the car down. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, trying to uh, remember. Oh, there it is. Okay. So a guy gets out. He's got a Suit and tie, briefcase, shades on. He just kind of looks around for a bit and uh, walks over to the open garage where you guys are. He's like, just stop kicking, punching, and look. Yeah. So just like, it's like, all right, which one of you guys is Shapiro? I'm Shapiro. Some guys here. <laughs> it's all women. <laughs> Mojo's much like, hey, 
dude, do you mind? The lady's indisposed at the moment. He's <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> he puts his glass back on. My apologies. Mr. Shapiro, uh, we have some business to discuss. Do you have an office we can go to? You can discuss it here. I prefer to discuss it in private. And I point at uh, I point at Mojo, and I'm like, get out. <laughs> but I keep uh, I want to keep. Um, you can use the bathroom. And, God. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like use the bathroom. It's like, do you have somewhere to be? <laughs> I was just like, fine. Jeez. It's just... <laughs> Go, goes to uh, she goes goes in the kitchen. She's gonna fix herself something. Hey, and I take out another cigarette. Carl looks, kind of looks, looks, looks around, sighs, and hits the button that closes the garage door. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the only part. That's why just does it in the street. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> he, he or pulls like, a chain. Pulls the chain to bring it down. Yeah, pulls it, that's it down. Yeah. And he goes over to the the, the work the workbench and puts down his briefcase. And he's like. He's like, uh, my name is Carlton. I'm a federal agent. He holds out his badge. What do you want with me? He's like, I understand you. It's no more. Yeah. I understand you brought in uh, Rufus recently. One uh, Rufus uh, Rufus Council. Yeah. All right. He's a pretty dangerous caller, but it indicates you know your stuff. The uh, the government has a job for you. I just punch, start punching the bag, almost like ignoring him. But he, he, he continues uh, nonchalantly. He's just like, a year ago there was a theft of some classified materials from a government facility. We've been trying to track down the crew that pulled the heist. So far, we were, until recently, we were out of leads. Uh, two weeks ago, the head of that crew, a guy named Cochran Robbins, wound up dead in the desert. He had uh, material on him, which has finally given us the leads we need to track down the rest of his crew. Give me names. So, uh, if, you're will, if you're willing to take the case, I'll, I'll, I'll take the case, I have case files right here for each, each of them. The name. Give me a name. Tell me who, who's running this or whatever you know. So, so, well then... We are currently looking for Nero Brown, Christian King, Regina Bellman, and a woman who refers to himself only as Chase. Uh, do I recognize any of these names? Yeah, you know, uh, you've heard of some of these guys before. You know, Nero Brown is, is a uh, is a computer hacker who is uh, known as the Fiddler because he used to be a concert violinist before he started used, uh, doing a tech fraud and other things. Right. Uh. Chase, you know, is a, is a thief. She uh, primarily does car theft. She's uh, a pretty she's a pretty good driver. Uh, Regina Bellman is known by multiple aliases, but most of the time she goes simply as the Countess. She's a grifter. And Christian King, uh, he's he's muscle. He's also uh, he's usually known by the alias Prester John. Prester John was a mythical Christian monarch who supposedly ruled a part of darkest Africa. These are all people. Yeah. And Cochrane Robbins. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. The last guy, Cochrane Robbins, the head of the team. He was the guy who brought them all together. He was a bit of a criminal mastermind, but it looks like his number came up if he's been pronounced dead. Um, is any of them, like, have personal issues? Like, have I had a personal dealings with any of them? Uh, in the past, uh, you've never uh, collected bounties on any any of them, but you, like, you are familiar with them and that they do have bounties on them. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna shrug it off at first and say that I'm not interested because it's more of a personal vendetta for me when it comes to law enforcement, right? Is there anybody at all that's uh, that I might like? Is there anybody that might be connected to something that's Cochran Robbins was very deeply connected in the criminal underworld. He ran, uh, he like I said, this was his personal crew, but he has connections to lots of other jobs, including some cases that I think he's kind of the guy who's who's like rumored to be connected to a lot of different crimes, including right. some of your open case files. Okay, that's good. Uh, and um, the uh, the Cochran guy uh, was that the guy who was dead? Or yeah, he's the guy who uh, they found they found him dead in the desert, and uh, they tra they traced him back to finding clues to where the rest of his gang was hiding out. 
If, if Cochran's dead, how come we haven't found the rest of them? It's like, well, if once news of Cochran's death came out, we figure his crew are going to do a pretty quick fade. If we start putting a big federal dragnet out for them, they'll scatter. We'll never find them. But uh, one bounty hunter with a reputation for dogged pursuit to the verge of obsession. So if, if he manages to bring in a couple of them, well, we might manage to catch the, catch the ones you don't get before they uh, get wise. Um, We're prepared to offer $50,000 for each. Bring them all in. The government will tack another zero onto that. <clears throat> Hang on, did I do my math right? <laughs> um. No, I think it was it was it was it was no, it was Hang on a second. <laughs> I had this in my head when I came up with this. It was it's going to be like a good amount but not an insane amount. Right. I think it was I think it was I think it was 10 it was 10,000 each, 100 grand for all four. Right. That was it. Well, I, I, I kick and punch the bag a little bit more, and then uh, I just kind of nod. But uh, uh, I'm going to say, if I do this, you've got to reopen the case. Which one? Well, it'll be whichever, like, no. whatever one that I'm kind of... Okay. Um, we'll have to make up name something. It. Okay, cool. Um, I say drunk driving accidents, probably. Uh mm -hmm. But it was really something like they call it like a misdemeanor or whatever, and he got mm -hmm. like, got off scot free. But he was actually a leader of a, a drug lord company or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, and he killed my I don't know wife and well, kids. Well, no, I, I was just saying it's like you know it's just you, you open the Kirkoff case. Kirkoff case. Oh, yeah, that's open. what. Okay, that's what you're that's looking for. Okay, that's that's what I was looking for. Just the name the name of the case. You don't have to specify. Okay, I, I don't know. I'm just giving you like an example. Yeah, sure. Open the Kirkoff case. Sure. All right. Get this done. We can reopen the Kirkhoff case for you. So you, you, what was the briefcase? Uh, you're probably already familiar with most of these people, but we have files that uh, indicate where you should be able to uh, locate them. Their, la their last known uh, locations based on the, all the information we have. Uh, keep me posted, will you? He hands you a card. Just contact this number. Let me know what's going on. Bring you bring you bring them down. I'll I'll send in the cavalry to pick them up. Sure. All right. Okay. Closes the pursuit case. Good luck, Mr. Shapiro. And he pulls the chain, and lets himself out. So, Mojo comes back in, eating eat, eat, eat a sandwich. I kind of give him give him a snide. I give a snide like after he leaves, and kind of like, fucking hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Blink more, asshole. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so Mo Mojo comes in, finishes her sandwich, does a little bit more tinkering with her, and says, like, uh, okay, and good as new. So you guys have another job, it sounds like. He has another job. I don't work for the man. Right. Well, fair enough. Oh, I uh, I got you a uh, I got you a little update on your case file, man. Oh, uh, let's see. It is yeah. We tracked down the serial number on your motivator. Uh, your left no. one. Yeah, I didn't think we were gonna figure that one out. Uh, yeah, we tracked it down to a uh, a company that actually. Does uh, stuff for uh, let's see. It does stuff here. They had a contract with the military for a while, uh, but then I've, um, then I've actually found out uh, it's actually a front. The company's actually a front for uh, a gang. They were la they were laundering uh, money through it. What gang is that? To, belonged to a guy named uh, Cochran Robbins. God damn it! <laughs> what? I'm just telling you what I found out. Yeah, we are on the case. <laughs> I'm not doing this. 
Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, the whole thing seems to be a front front for this gang to move stuff through. They moved uh, money and tech through it, from the looks of things. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to take a look at that then, figure out what the history is, figure out how they're involved with this. But for now, baby, finish what your hand started. Look out that tent. Like, just shakes her head. Things I do for... Um, <laughs> clang, clang, clang. Okay. And then... <laughs> oh, baby, you know I love how rough your hands are. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to cut to the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Okay, so you guys are uh, driving up to a place called uh, Archimedes Industries. This is where... Uh, your motivator was uh, built, apparently. And uh, Rocco, you're there because um, the 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 link the, the uh, link to uh, Nero Brown is that he is apparently working here under an assumed name. He's uh, working as uh, he's working under the name Lincoln Washington. Which is the biggest friggin' alias you've ever heard in your life. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Okay. So, yep, you can show up to Archimedes. It's a pretty impressive looking place. Though, but as you're aware, it's, it's pretty much all of, all the front. You know, the building looks very impressive, but you've seen these kind of places before. They've got some offices in the front with some people there who think they work for an actual company. And then when you get, you get further to the back you have, you know, the actual operation, you know, stuff getting smuggled in and out, stuff being stored. Um, and then they also do a bit of a, a churn and burn with the company books to launder money. But uh, you just go to the front desk and there's a receptionist, uh, receptionist there, young woman, you know, kind of button down look. She's like, uh, good afternoon, sir. How can I help you? Hey, I'm just looking to speak to uh, Mr. Washington Lincoln, or Lincoln Washington. Oh, Mr. Washington, hang on, I will see if he's available. And Thanks, she gets on, She gets on the, on the phone. So you guys are looking around. There is like a, a big uh, statue in the in the front of of the uh, of the building in the lobby of a man with a giant lever pushing against a globe. And there is a uh, a, a line of uh, a, a line written under it. Just says, "Give me a large enough lever, and I'll move the world." Archimedes. Yeah. So, what can I say? I'm woefully unoriginal. <laughs> and so, so is so is this place. It's a lever and a place to stand. Ah. Okay. Well, that's what it actually says. I, I didn't know the actual line. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, it's a translation of a translation, so I'm probably not right either. Yeah. Okay, ladies, just like, uh, uh, excuse me, sir, who should I say is calling? Um. Uh, let's see. Um. Cochran Robbins. No. <laughs> what? A dead guy? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. Cock and Robbins. Cock and, Cock and Robbins. Ah, <laughs> fantastic. Like, Cock and Robbins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll tell him. She, uh, she, she hangs up the, uh, the phone, and she's like, um, Mr. Robbins is in a meeting, but he should be finished in about ten minutes. Would you please go to the waiting area. Yeah. And she tells you he's on the uh, he's on the fourth floor. There there will be a uh, seating area by his office. Okay. Great. So, you guys go up in the elevator. <laughs> Did he order just ice? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, you guys get into the elevator, you go up, it dings, you get to the third floor, the elevator stops, the door opens, and a bunch of security guys get in. Okay. You get, out the second, you get out the second floor. They're just like, uh, and they hit the uh, fourth floor as well. And it's kind of waiting, listening to the music, you know, 
Da, 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 so do I, did I have da, any uh, extra revolvers at home, or did I lose it? And I don't have my Magnum. Oh no, you had you had. Uh, I I say you, you you wouldn't have any problem picking up your thirty eight. Okay. Picking up. You, you're right. You have no problem picking up thirty eight. You're licensed to carry, so you can go to a store and buy one. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're you're pretty, you're pretty well armed. Yeah. Okay. So as I said, actually, they got on the second floor. You get up to about the third floor, and uh, I would like you guys to uh, scope out the scene by making a brains roll. Sure. Uh, that is a ten. Okay. Um, brains zero. I got a seven. Seven. Okay. Marco, you have kind of a bad feeling about this, and uh, so, so I get to I, I get to yeah. ask one, right? Yeah. You both have a bad feeling about this. The question I'm going to ask is, so does anyone want to get out of this elevator before things start? <laughs> there we go. Who is the type of person in the room? Uh, at the moment, it's, it's Anne. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, That's I mean, my these, question. I mean, they, they, these guys, you know, they're security guys. They're big. They're beefy. You know, they got walkie talkies. They probably have weapons on them. But at this moment in time, the toughest person in this elevator is still Anne Down. <laughs> nice. So you're not quite as worried as you once were, but you're still feeling this is this is a, it's a, it's a bad this is a bad scene. But but yeah, I so Anne just asked the question before we get before we get there. Does anyone want does anyone want to get off the third floor? <laughs> Um, <laughs> and would you like to roll might? I'm going to call this getting in their face. You're basically doing an intimidation attack on them. And that is the lowest I could possibly roll, a five. Well, that's an experience. Five. You guys have to the third floor. Nobody gets off. But uh, just as you're passing, just as you're, as you're almost to the fourth floor, one of the security guys hits the emergency stop and, and they attack you. So, uh, are you or are you guys going to take the hits or try and avoid avoid the uh, the hits? It, there's, there's, it's it's I'm difficult good. to avoid, but you can try. You can basically try and defend. But they're going first. I'm going to uh, get out of the way. Okay. Well, actually, I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to take the hit because I mean, it's uh, it's an elevator. It's mm. it's not much to move around here. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot you to mention jump uh, that the, the the one harm you took fighting Rufus is gone now. Oh, okay. Uh, because w one harm is like bruises and bleeding that is gone after after about a scene after a scene, scene. change. Cool. It's only when you start taking more damage that it takes longer to recover. Cool. <laughs> Cue the seventies fight music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh, yeah. The only thing music is just instant stop. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually no. I'm gonna actually. I'm going to get out of the way because I'm going to. Uh, get behind him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pop up. I'm gonna jump up and pop up the roof and climb up there. Oh, you're just trying to escape the elevator. Escape okay. the elevator. Yeah. All right. And what's <laughs> Anne, what's Anne doing? Anne is standing there with her arms crossed. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so these guys are a bit uh, more dangerous than the guys at the docks, but um, uh, 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 Rocco rolls hustle to escape the room, and uh, Anne rolls might to shrug off the attacks. I got a seven. And I got an eleven. Okay. So the guys pile on, and so so they are like hitting you with hitting you with batons. And uh, holding your holding your your arms in place, but you're just not moving. You're just kind of standing there, taking it. Uh, Rocco, you managed to get the uh, the you managed to do a thing where you basically just punch the uh, panel out from the roof and grab on and get yourself halfway out. But unfortunately, uh, two guys grab you and pull you pull you back in, and they're wrestling with you to try and to try and. So I'm like I'm like hanging up there, and my legs are being like grabbed. Oh on. yeah, they're trying to they're trying to pull you back down. It's basically it's 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 the loading pallet all over again. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, like I imagine there's one on each leg, and yeah. I'm gonna try and like like kick them forward and like make make their heads bang off the walls to let go. 
Okay. Well, that's going to be you're going to try to throw these guys around. That's going to be might. Alrighty. So what is, it, what is this deliver a beatdown? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, 11, 12, 12. Okay, so yeah, the guys the guys are on your legs. You just basically like, drag drag your legs up, and it looks like all those uh, all that uh, bench pressing and uh, kicking the bag pays off. You just launch them into the side of the elevator and knock them <laughs> both out. Uh, and you got uh, about four or five guys trying to like one's trying to get you in a chokehold, another one is trying to get to his taser, but he's he's kind of he he's just been knocked aside by the two guys who got kicked into the wall. <laughs> what, what is Ant's response to all uh, this? I think. I think I'm going to fall back on the couple of guys that are holding onto my back, and the other two, I am going to knock their heads together while I'm falling back on the other two. Okay. Use the way to my diesel engine to my advantage. Yep. So deliver, deliver beat down. Deliver beat down. As only yeah. you can. Yup. Yep. And again, it's the gang, but again, so are you. <laughs> <laughs> ten. Ten. All right. So, so ten plus I. Just do what you say you did. You just basically just launch backward and smash two of them against against the uh, the back wall, and it makes a very sizable dent. And they just basically grab the two guys that are hold, holding on you, and you either I don't know if you slam their hands together or just slam their faces in, into your into your chest and hit knock them off the engine. You know what I do? I slam their faces into my chest and I spin my wheels up. <laughs> Rubber. Ow. Ow. How okay. many guys are left there? Um, let's see. That was you had two. She had four. I think there were. I think that's all of them, actually. Rock. Oh, you you have gotten up onto the roof of the elevator. Well, once once uh, yeah, once. And uh, just surrounded by unconscious security guards right now. Yeah. Well, once they're knocked out, I'm gonna hop back down. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna. But cuff you guys are still stuck between floors. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cuff them, but I'm gonna do the whole. See if there's somebody that's my size and do the whole, you know, uh, I'm a security guy. <laughs> oh, so you're just putting on, like, a jacket and a badge? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm not sure if there's a jacket or badge that will fit in well, but she might be able to just, like... Okay. She can probably have a badge. I won't put on cuffs. I'll just oh. have my arms behind me like I have handcuffs. Hmm. Oh, clever. And is there like a start button yeah, or is this a... Way. Oh yeah, you can just hit the button to undo the undo the emergency stop and keep oh. going to the fourth floor. Once I clear the area a little bit and push them over to the side so that people Absolutely. can't see directly in the doors. It'll just like flop out the door as you arrive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ding! Okay. <laughs> right, up on the, uh, the fourth floor. And uh, so you guys are passing through this. Uh, there's, a bunch of, there's a bunch of cubicles. People yeah. are on the phone. They're typing... We're gonna have like one cuff on and the other one not completely closed, like not closed. That way, oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think I have handcuffs in my size. I just have my hands oh, behind hand, my back, behind your back and okay. you're coming so close that no one notices. Yeah. Oh, so it's the old uh, Han Solo Chewbacca again, but I got you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, oh, if anyone were in a hat. If anyone was like a fedora, I would like put the fedora over my face so like yeah. hide it a little bit. All right. Okay. So you guys, so you got your you got your hat on. You got your prisoner. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yep. So you just look at the wall and you see uh, Lincoln Washington's uh, office is just down this corridor. Good. Yep. So you're uh, nobody. Nobody. Nobody stops you. Nobody asks any questions. A couple people kind of glance at you as you go past, and you are someone who's like, "Isn't the security officer's office downstairs?" But uh, they're too busy working to really pay any attention. So you get to the office, and uh, there's Lincoln Washington's door. I'll just do a uh, simple knock. You knock. There's no answer. Try the door. It's locked. Uh, I try I just, the door. I, I, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I step aside. <laughs> like, and try the door. <laughs> <laughs> Check to see if it's locked. Try the door. <laughs> so I, I assume you're doing something unpleasant to the door, and <laughs> I'm walking through it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you don't have uh, the break shit move, so you don't get a bonus to that. But you just roll might, just power through it. 
Yeah, that's a 10. <laughs> yeah, that door is no match for the uh, Detroit Steel Heart of, uh, of uh, Eastbound and Down. So, yeah, it just flies out the window. You see, like, you know, in Office, there's, like, a, a really old, it was a really old-fashioned looking computer on, on the desk. There's pictures on the wall of a, there's, like, a fake picture of a, there's like a picture of, like, an old guy with his arms folded and a little sign that reads, Our Founder, underneath it. And, uh, but the office is, is empty. However, you do notice that um, a, uh, a window is open. Oh, I'm going to run up to the window. Okay, you go up to the, uh, the, up to the, up to the window, and you see what looks like uh, a zip line to uh, the building next door. I and take off, it, as they're taking my belt off. Oh, yeah. yeah. As, uh, as a, another closer look shows that apparently you see a guy in uh, a business suit, uh, an African-American gentleman who is putting the finishing touches on what looks like um, like a little tiny helicopter. Actually, it looks more like a hang glider with like a little gas-powered lawnmower attached to the bottom of it. I forget what those are called. But, uh, yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like the Fiddler is planning to make his escape in a little gas-powered glider. Well... I put the I wrap the belt around my knuckles and mm -hmm. or in one knuckle and then put it up on the zip line and then Wee <laughs> feet up in the air as I go spurling down this mm -hmm. zip line. Okay. Indeed, so Rocco takes the zip line. He's he's heading down, no problems. Uh, what's Anne doing? I am going to I obviously can't take the zip line. I am hmm. going to pick up the desk and fall out the window with it beneath me, using it as a cushion to break my fall. <laughs> okay, um, I have no idea what kind of move that is. I'm just going to put it as, um, keep your, you're actually, actually under the imminent threat of gravity, so I'm going to rule it as keeping your cool, I guess. What stat are you rolling? Does this qualify as <laughs> true? Does this qualify as quick thinking? I think this qualifies as bad thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Does it qualify as jumping? So I can... <laughs> <laughs> this does actually qualify as jumping, though, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. That's right, your bionic legs. I forgot. I forgot you have those. Because I'm pretty sure the right, 16... So I'm pretty sure that the bionic, I think it was a $6 million man who had the bionic legs. I'm pretty sure he used them to jump from, like, fourth-story windows. So you can probably just jump right across instead of taking the zip line. Just jump right at the window and, like, whoa, see you there. <laughs> or at the very no, least, you could, you could drop, you could, you'll drop down to the fourth floor. You probably will, if you make your roll, you won't take any damage. Yeah, I'll make my roll just to drop down. Yeah, Bionic legs, go. And that is a 14. <laughs> oh, leap from, can leap I land on your car in the parking lot, too? On a 14? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I take his desk, and I crush it beneath me, landing on top of his car, and completely denting the roof. <laughs> and then I just get up and dust myself off. Oh, well, my car? car. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you mean uh, a Brown's car? I assume. Hmm. On uh, Lincoln Washington's car. Lincoln Washington's uh, car, okay. Yeah. So you just land right in his parking space and crush his car. <laughs> <laughs> He's not getting away in that vehicle, but now you have to see if you can stop him from getting away in the glider. So, Rocco, you uh, you uh, zip line down to the other thing. Brown sees you coming, and he's hurrying his way to the finishing touches. Well, as you as you, as you come to uh, a stop, what are you, you going to do? Uh, well, um, I didn't really state, I mean... I, would I have my magnum right now, or would would that be something I wouldn't take in this? That's up to you, man. Like, yeah. Well, I'm gonna whip up my magnum, and uh, if there's any uh, if there's any need for this thing to have a finishing touch, I'm gonna start shooting at it. Um. Well, don't forget, you also have a special move called wake up call. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that works too. I'm gonna just go, blam, freeze. You're fine. You're giving him a warning shot. Yeah. Exactly. So I can use that move? You'll go ahead. Oh, wake up call. Here we go. Oh. Seven. 
Six. And I only got a six because of my plus one, so I still didn't do it. Okay, well, that's an XP for you, and uh, yeah. you, fi you fire in the air, but uh, it doesn't seem to phase him. He basically kind of, like, ratchets up the last bolt and starts pushing the glider towards the edge of the roof. You can already, he's already he pull, he's pulled the pull cord. He's got the engine going. Mm. I'm just going to start running at him. Oh, you're just going to hustle after him? Yeah. I'm gonna, if, he, if, he, if it's starting to take off, I'm going to jump on there. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be the thing I do. Yeah. <laughs> Rocco's <laughs> response is to hang off of the things that are really high up. I'm glad he's not uh, scared of heights, because that would really suck for him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think people are going to start calling him Spider Shapiro. <laughs> yeah, especially since my name is The Rock. <laughs> the Rock The Rock doesn't usually move. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> All right, so roll, roll plus hustle. Chase after him. Ooh, uh, six. Another six. I might be taking a spill here. Yep, you uh, you you approach dashing towards him. You trip you trip you, tri you trip over over like uh, one of those little chimneys on the roof and fall flat on your face. He pushes the glider to the edge and takes off. And down on the ground, you can see uh, you can see uh, his, his the glider lifting off from from the edge of the edge of the roof and uh, basically head, heading out into uh, into a wooded heading he just heading out heading out over the highway. Shit. I am um, going to chase him on foot. And just he's got to land sometime. Okay. Mm. You know what? Maybe I can throw a wrench into his works. Okay. So bionic legs go. Man's just taking off in pursuit of the glider, trying to keep it in sight. Uh, Rocco, pick yourself up, dust yourself off. What are you doing? I'm um, well. I'm on top of a building. Am I? Uh yeah it's uh, it's it's you're not up on the quite up on the fourth floor you're up, it's like a, like a three three about a uh, two or three story building okay um hmm well I'm gonna look over the edge is there like a fire escape below me um no there's not but there are there are like windows and window sills going down this looks like some kind of like small outbuilding which is probably just used for storage or maybe it's not even used at all as part of the front mm. so there's bushes. It's kitchen. surrounded by a lovely little hedge. Yeah, so I'm going to do some jumping. All right. <laughs> you're going to have to jump. <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> All right, I'm totally doing it. I'm going to jump uh, right into the big tallest tree. I do the whole okay. Tarzan thing if I got to go across. Oh, yeah. So you're just trying to like hit hit as much foliage as you can on the way down. Yeah. So I guess that'll be a hustle for your jump. Oh my. Been using hustle like almost the entire game. <laughs> well, you're doing uh, lots of action. Man. Seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay. Well, you uh, well you do manage to uh, uh, you 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 just manage to grab the branch of the tree, but then it slips out of your hands and you fall into the hedge and you take one arm. Ouch. So it wasn't a very soft landing, but it's a landing that you know you didn't break anything. It's a landing I survived. Yep. Okay. You, as you. As you extricate yourself from from the hedge and dashes past you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, Rocco, what are you, what are you, you going to do? You're not sure you can keep up with Anne when she when she's going full tilt. Um, I'm just going to uh, go out in the traffic and uh, pull over a car with my gun. <laughs> and, and, and my and, and my fake badge that I have. Ah, okay. So you have a choice here. If you're going, if you if it's if the, if you're mainly using the badge, it's getting what you want. Yeah. If you're mainly brandishing your magnum, it's getting in their face. Um. Might yeah, I'm move. gonna have to. Gonna have to get in their face. Okay. Well, and also, uh, you also have feeling lucky, punk. So yeah, I know. If, if you do manage to get it in his face, it'll give you more bonuses against him. So to, 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 a, to, a, to a random, like, you know, yeah. car so, guy. So you got the badge and the gun, but the gun is prominent. Yeah, the gun is a little bit more threatening than the badges. Yes. Stop the car! Okay. Get in their face. Throw might. Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, well, on a seven or nine, 
uh, you can choose. They can either get the hell out, away from you, barricade themselves in, give them something they think you want, or back off hands where you can see them, or tell them what you tell you what you want to know. I'm so, gonna have to give me something that they think I you I want. Oh, well, wait, hang on. I think I get to choose that actually. Oh. Just give me a second. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think in, in I think in it's this... me because I think it it would say DJ gets to choose. See, the, the, if you look at the take a hit or get out of the way, it says that the DJ gets to pick one. No, well, and the, the other ones are you get to pick one. When the how the wording is, when you attempt to get someone to act through the threat of violence, they can choose between sucking it up and forcing oh. your hand. They. So yeah. Oh, uh, they choose, I, yes. I think, but I think in this case, this guy's not going to be a hero. He's just going to give you his car. <laughs> you're, you're, you're pointing a magnum at him. He's giving you his car. Okay. However, you maybe, just... Maybe, maybe it's like low on gas or flat tires. I, mean, I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, instead, of, instead of that, um, you're going to... You're getting heat. You currently have one heat. You've stolen a car in broad daylight uh, in the middle of a busy street. So uh, you now have one heat. Okay. So cops have been notified, probably. Well, how heat works is kind of different. Is that uh, you, as you accumulate heat, there are actually certain moves that get bonuses for having heat. Okay. Uh, but what it does is that the DJ can spend a heat point to give you a minus one on your next roll. That's called burning. Oh. Or, cool. All right, that works. Or they can lay down the law, which is basically they can spend heat to cause uh, to basically have uh, increasing amounts of. It's kind of like having a wanted rating in GTA. One heat point gets you like a car coming to investigate. Uh, five heat points gets like a citywide dragnet and uh, federal agents on you. <laughs> but so you've accumulated one heat. I ha I can choose to burn that or lay down the law at a later date. But yeah, you've you've done something. You've, you've done wrong. Okay. So, so DJ points basically. The screws yeah. over. I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's points I can use to burn you later. Okay. So. Uh, and uh, you are running down the road when uh, Rocco uh, drives past you in a car. <laughs> what are you on doing? a busy street. On a busy street. Oh, that's it. I just and it's like just dodging traffic. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna run faster. Oh, use my car. <laughs> Seems like the best thing to do. <laughs> j j jump on my car and use his leverage to try see if you can get higher enough to catch up to this guy in the air. <laughs> like boing boy. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like use your car as a trampoline. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think this. I don't think sanctions would support that. Yeah. But uh, no, I'm just gonna run faster because he's gonna go off road sooner or later. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh. Well, that's that's actually actually a good point. Um, you see that the the uh, glider is taking a turn and it's going into uh, one of the city's parks. There is a, a jog. There is, um, like I said, the, the street continues on around the edge of the park, but there is like a jogging trail that actually goes into the park proper. I'm driving right through the park. Perfect. I don't need. To <laughs> 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 My aunt's, aunt's like, oh, I'll just take this jogging path. <laughs> okay, uh, just Rocco, you are now at two heat. <laughs> Because people are now diving out of the way. You've just destroyed a hot dog cart. <laughs> <laughs> Muscle flies everywhere. Yes. People are diving into bushes and into small ponds to get away from you. Uh. All right. Thank you that. Um. So, but yeah, see the the uh, the the, uh, the glider is. Um, yeah, the glider seems to be. It is getting. It is getting lower. You see, it's just going, coming in over the trees. Uh, so you just. I guess you guys are just continuing after it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just chasing Rocco's car through the park. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, you guys uh, break through the foliage, and you see there is like a little lake in the middle of the park, and in the middle of the lake is a little island with a little tiny castle. In it, and it's, it's kind of the lake kind of surrounds it like a moat. And you see the the glider actually lands on top of like one of the parapets in the castle. <laughs> so what are you I guys doing? Slam I, the brakes and rip up the I'm, grass. Yeah, I'm going to use the car as a trampoline and jump straight to the middle of the lake. I told you. <laughs> um, actually, could that actually be? Um, how does the help a brother out work? 
Uh, you roll plus hooks. You basically roll 2d6, and you add the number of hooks you have to that person. Yeah, but what do you mean? Like, when, when, does that, when does that actually come into play? Would that come when into play now? When you directly assist someone you have a hook with, when you have a connection to someone. So you currently have one hook to Anne. Mm -hmm. So if you roll 2d6 plus 1, get 10 or higher, she gets a plus 1 to her jump to clear the moat. Do you want to do that? Because I'm basically Sounds using the car almost like as a... Sorry, so it's like there's like a little like stone pathway that leads up to the edge of the moat, and there is a drawbridge that would normally be down, but is currently up. So what are you guys doing? So yeah, that's that's, that's what I'm doing. I am using the car as a trampoline. So Rocco's just like speeding. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. so, 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 so Anna's going to climb onto the top of the car. Rocco's going to gun it straight for the edge of the moat. Mm -hmm. Then he's going to hit the brakes and launch you over the moat. Yeah, exactly. Okay. As, as the car is uh, sliding towards the lake, braking, I'm going to be jumping on the car and using the momentum to launch myself. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I figured, I figured like that. So you're basically it's like you're using the, the, the car's forward momentum, then it stops, all of it gets transferred to you, and you're going to try and clear the moat. Okay. Yep. Um, so, uh, Rocco, roll to help Anne out by rolling 2d6 plus your one hook. Help a sister out. Help a sister out. 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 1 from the thing is 10. Okay. Uh, All 10 right. Plus, that so plus, plus 1 to you, and you also get plus 1 to you. Yep, so that's uh, Plus two for your bionic legs, plus one for the assistance, and uh, roll your hustle, I guess, or your might. I think it's your hustle. Hustle, yeah. It's a hustle, and it's 12. Nice. Okay, so beautiful do 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 leap as Anna goes right off the roof of the car, and I... I <laughs> yeah, so you, basically, you, you clear the moat, you go above the drawbridge, and you land on the battlements. And you do a combat roll and get to a stop. There's a camera cut, and then you make the roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, you are now currently on the on the on the on the battlements, looking around, and uh, you see that uh, you see the glider is uh, parked on like a, a parapet across the way, and that uh, Brown is heading down a, a flight of stairs. Can I get the he's, jump he's, on he's him? Heading, he's heading down to the courtyard. What? Can I get the jump on him? You want to leap down at him? I want to leap down with a giant monkey wrench and smash his skull in. Okay. You know, they do want to question these people after you get after you're through with them, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll aim for his shoulders. Okay. You're just gonna just land on this guy and pin him to the ground. That's cool. Yep. Uh make your leap. Uh, so that be my other hustle to do this. Am I laying a beat down or am I uh, leaping? Uh, uh, I think you're 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 leaping. You're not in melee with him yet. The leap will get you in melee range. Okay, so it's hustle with a plus two for my legs. I'm using it a lot. I like this. Yeah. Well, you, you guys are doing lots of action stuff, which is cool. Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. It's another. It's another bionically assisted leap from the battlements to the courtyard, and then there's another camera cut, and then you drop like three or four feet onto him and, and knock him to the ground. <laughs> and he's just like, Sounds he's about just, right. He, yeah. He just goes. He just goes sprawling, and he's just like, okay, okay, okay. I give. I give. I give. He's like, you crazy? Is I gravity's not affecting shoulder. you or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just hit his shoulder and then drop the drawbridge. Ouch! Just go over, lower, lower, lower the, uh, lower the lever. The drawbridge lowers. Rocco just drives in. <laughs> Get in the car. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. So, guys, it is I'd about. Like to... Oh, poor, sorry. I'd like to get on the third degree and start. I'm going to start questioning him about where the others are. Okay. Uh, roll brains. Yep. That is an 11. Okay. So ask your questions. He's just like, ow! Ow! What is. Come on. Where are the others? 
what, what others, man? You, you crazy? I, I, I run the IT department for a, for a very important company. You know. Yeah, raise the monkey wrench above my head. The oh, okay, 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 okay. You want you want to say a name or something? Give me a name. Give me a clue. Give me a fucking hint. Come on. <laughs> I have a clue right here in my hand. <laughs> Do you really want me to give it to you? It's like, okay, man, okay, okay. My mom's in Minnesota, all right, all right. I got an uncle in New York. What the hell do you want, the people want? I, I think I banged the wrench against the elbow of his dislocated shoulder. Ow! Same. Do you just not remember the names of the other people? <laughs> I want him to say them. Like oh okay okay so you slap him around a bit and he's like okay he's like ah it's like okay okay fine fine it's like it's like ah King's work King's working in a roadhouse ah, up by Highway 74 Countess ah, Countess is in L A she's on a movie set Chase is in Vegas. She's running a used. She's running a stolen car ring. That's all I got, man. I swear. All right, I'll spend my first hold. Are you telling the truth? Yes. As right, far as he knows. The monkey wrench. Yes, as far as he knows, King is at the roadhouse up on the highway, on the highway to uh, Nevada. Uh, Chase is in Vegas, and the Countess is in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, do you know if they have any plans, any escape plans? It's like, it's, man, we all got escape plans. They don't always work, obviously. <laughs> Specifics. Uh, it's, like, it's like, King won't try to run. He'll try and take you out. That's how he works. Chase, exact opposite. You're going to have to catch her. And you're going to need to be really good with a really good driver to do it. Countess will just try to slip away. She's good at that. I'll spend my second hold. Mm -hmm. Is he telling the truth? Yeah, he's worked with these people long enough to know that's how they operate. King is muscle. He doesn't run if he doesn't run if he thinks he can take you. Um, as well, again, Chase the exact opposite. She likes to go fast, and she likes to go fast away from people who are trying to arrest her. And the Countess is a grifter. Like she said, she'll she'll wear, she'll put on a disguise. She'll adopt a different action, accent. She'll disappear. Okay. And have you ever seen this innovator before? Pointing to the one on my left uh, left side. He's like, what? It's like, ah. We we run a lot of stuff through Archimedes. Okay. I mean, a lot of it's black market. Some of it's ex-military. It's like I can. Is that a yes or a no? It's like, look, I don't keep track of everything that passes passes through our communities, okay? But I'll spend my last it, hold. He's like, but I, I'll make Is you a deal. telling the truth. He's telling you the truth about this, yes. but he's willing to make you a deal. He's like, I'm listening. Look, I know this. I know the systems, backwards and forwards, through the company. You give me some time, I can get you info on that. And if I give you time that involves you being free? Yeah. I want you to just take me back to our okay. It's like, look, man, it's all the leverage I got, all right? I just want some time. I just want time to get back into this get back into the system, erase a couple of files. Nothing connected to what you're doing. I mean, you'll be right. You'll be right there, man. I, I think you'll know if I do that. I relocate his shoulder and I tell him no deal. Ow! Relocating, by the way, is also very painful. I know. I know. It's incredibly painful. Just tell him the light. Ah! But uh, but I yeah, he's told you. That's how I'm going to be like, spending what? all of my. Uh, all of my holds. Are they telling the truth? Are they telling the truth? Are they telling the truth? 
monkey. Well, it also well, so, well, yeah. There's also the stuff like how. Well, you could. You, one of the things you could have said was how could I get this character to do this? To do blank. I could have, but that's not the way that Anne operates. I mean, she's, she's got brains, keep... but she's, she's not. She's not really it. that. <laughs> yeah, she's very well, look, focused. Going... Let's say that about her. Well, look, you're going to have to take him back to Archimedes and let him get into the system anyway, if he's going to find out what, what the motivator is. But he is currently in your custody, and you basically removed his escape route and, and his hidey hole. So if you call Carlton and tell him to pick him up at Archimedes, you'll probably have time to, to latch it, find out about the motivator. Mm. But then he'll delete files, which will probably be evidence and or warning signs to his cohorts. Well, that's the risk you're going to have to take. If you want to find out more about the motivator, you're going to have to give him a chance to get back in the system. That's true, but there's three more people I can threaten. Plus, I can always go back to him and try to cut him a deal once he's in the interrogation room. Okay, so are you guys taking him in? I am, for sure. Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay, so you guys, uh, you guys drop the dime on Nero the Fiddler Brown. And uh, Agent Carlton shows up with a, with a couple more guys in a black car, and he's like, he's like, okay, it's like, okay, it's like, good job, Shapiro. You and your partner have uh, got the first link in the chain. It seems we'll be wiring the money to your account. She's not my partner. Whatever you say, man. She, she's got my back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is now about three o'clock. So would you like to end the episode here, and we'll start up next time with you tracking down the uh, the next guy on your list? Yeah, it sounds good to me. So what do you guys think so far? Oh, that was a really Mike logical Mark setting. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very fast-paced. Well, that's the thing they, they actually say, and the thing is that is that stuff like combat and chases in 77 is really fast and rather brutal. I mean, the, your your magnum does three harm, and the average person, uh, the average NPC, three harm is a kill, yeah. and the average PC, three harm is like a practically dead. So, <laughs> so once the guns and weapons come out, yeah, it's uh, it ends pretty fast. But you guys have been fun. You've been you've been you've been chasing. You run around in cars and chasing after guys and trading and trading uh, you know gunfire with people. Mm -hmm. I like it so far too as well. It's fun. It's been fun fun to run. Awesome. Well, yeah. So next time, you have a choice. Are you headed for the the highway, Las Vegas, L.A.? And they kind of go in a, in a chain. But if you guys want to like jump to one end or the other, that's fine. You can think about where you want to go next time. Sh should I keep that two heat on me? Uh, Carlson says he can uh, he can uh, take the heat off you for now. He's, okay. he's going to put in a phone call, you know, and uh, take the heat off you for now. Okay. But uh, there's, he says, he says, keep in mind, there's kind of limits. <laughs> yeah, of course. But, uh, he'll, he'll, uh, but uh, you've, 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 uh, you've done the task he asked you for, so he'll take away the two heat. Okay. You just, hey, well, the funny thing is, is like when I'm making like four or five hundred dollars on a bounty, mm -hmm. like I do minor damage, so the more money I make, the more damage I can afford. So that's, <laughs> so like half the park is like ripped up now with like. Tires, tracks, yeah. and shit, and like probably damaged like benches and stuff. And oh yeah, you you you. There were a lot and of. It's a civilian's car, <laughs> so it's like you know. Yeah, I think you're still not going to wind up making any money on this. <laughs> it's all for the justice. Yeah. But yeah. So, um, how does the end of session work? Well, at the end of each session, uh, we figure out. Uh, okay, your uh, your XP. At the end of the session. So, uh, were you guys following your buzz? I, I tried I as best as I could. Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, the thing is, you you uh, I, you said you said that uh, Rufus was uh, part of your payback. So yeah, there's that. And uh, Anne has been uh, following her motivator. Yeah, I've been trying to uh, try to. I was trying to do the uh, the payback thing a little bit more by saying like reopen cases and stuff like that because oh, yeah. that's why that's why I kept saying like I kept looking for. A reason for my guy to really care about something, because he mm -hmm. seems to be the type of person that, you know. Well, for you, it sounds like it's it's the Kirkhoff case and what and what the Kirkhoff case connects to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So let's see, that is, uh, wait, where, I had the page printed out for end of each session. Uh, heat, look for trouble, trouble finds you. Okay. Combat. I know that you get one XP for your buzz. Okay. And you also had XP for uh, all your failed rolls. I believe yeah. there is another one. Let me call up the PDF briefly. Yeah. To. Uh, oh, it's, oh, the rough draft is version 3.1. We got some random message from somebody. Huh? Where? What? Is not that Aaron? It's not open. No, it wasn't Aaron. No, it was some random dude who was watching and then said something about joining the call, and I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. Oh, right, here we are. Okay, so who yeah. Was it? What was the name, Jace? Um, I have to bring it up. Uh, Nano Cordelli. No one I know. No one I know. Oh, okay. Name's not familiar to me either. No, I think they just want it in on the game or something, or some random thing. Well, we were kind of short of players, but... <laughs> okay, yeah, here's, 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 yeah, here's ending the session. So I was right. Uh, you gave at least one example of following your buzz. You get at 1 XP per session. Uh, your hooks, did you resolve any of your hooks? We didn't resolve any, no. In order to resolve my hook, yeah. I would have to uh, probably either have some... Something else other than Eastbound is my best alien effort, so either you, she yeah. isn't, or <laughs> or something else more more bigger happens. Oh yeah, at that point, uh, right now you're saying that she's not your partner. You guys are just kind of looking for the same thing. If you ever did actually take Anne on as a partner, it would resolve that hook. Yeah, but I don't think Anne would want that yeah. since that would mean working for the man, and mm -hmm. right. Okay. But you did, yeah. and they also, they also say keeping up your hook. You give at least an example of keeping up the hook, and I'd say you did that as well. So that's also worth one XP per session. We built them. Okay. How much XP? Okay. Uh, a level? Okay. Um, I think it's, uh, is it seven plus one or something? Or? It's five plus your current level, and you guys are currently level one. So I just got five. Uh, so, yeah, you need six, to, so you need six XP to level up. Okay. So, so how, much, how much do you have, Jason? I have five. And you? And I have has? four. Four. Well, so you guys will probably level up next session. Nice. So, yeah, so when you go up and a level, you're... Get a yeah. Well, yeah, so when, once you go up in level, your XP resets to zero. But at the end of the session, you get to choose a new move from your role of story, you get a new thing, or you increase a zero attribute to a plus one. So where's the level go? There's no spot for a level on my sheet. I know. They're, they're, the sheets don't have spots for everything. They okay. don't have a... But, uh, but yeah, you guys are currently level one. Uh, probably, I'd say, just on failed rolls alone, you'll be able to make it to level two by the end of the next session. Cool. So give some thought to if you want a new thing or a new move, or if you want to increase a zero to plus zero to plus yeah. one. Because I think I think leveling in this game is is uh, it's like hot hot swapping, because you once you reach your a lot of experience, I think you can just say, oh, this would be very good in this situation. I'll just take this and then go, roll with it, right? So I don't think it's at the end of session. In mm, this one, it is. It is? When, you go, when you go up in level, your XP resets to zero. At the end of the session, you choose one of the following. Oh. Now how it says, oh. once you get to level five, you're considered a heavy hitter, and you can choose a new move from a different role or story. You can choose to get take a completely new role, or you can choose to retire your character. Mm. Cool. I think the max level is level 10, but once you get to level 5, you, like I said, you have options. Yeah. 
because it's good to keep it fresh. Because if everybody just keeps choosing everything plus two, mm-hmm. then um, it's pretty much you're succeeding on most of your rules. Yeah, and it gets boring. <laughs> yeah. Though from the looks of things, it looks like the only attribute increase you can do is to increase a zero to a plus one. Mm. Okay. So. Though I would probably go that if you want to increase a negative one to a zero, I'd probably let you do that as well by leveling up. Mm. But yeah, it says that if you if you decided that you just wanted to take on a completely new role, you wanted to stop being a vigilante and become you know a tough guy or a, or a, a sleuth, total option. Yeah, but that'd be a different character, right? Because you'd be retiring or dude. Well, no, no, that's a, you can actually continue playing that character just taking on a different role. Oh, right, taking a different role. That's after level 5. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. The thing is, you can say you can retire a character at any time. Once they retire, they become an NPC under DJ control. But if you wait until 5th level, then you get to say what their role is in the story. Nice. Cool. So. But yeah, the the adventures of uh, Rocco Shapiro and uh, Eastbound and Down off to a pretty uh, rip-roaring start. (laughs) <laughs> totally. Yeah. Cool. So I, th- I feel pretty good about that. I feel I could probably run this on the uh, on the uh, Ripcon day. Awesome. So. Uh, yay! Yay! And I don't, I, don't, I don't even know if I'd make uh, pre-gen characters because making characters is pretty fast. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Trying to get on air. That's not bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Uh, but yeah, so um, that's it for us. Uh, you guys can check us out at, um, or, you know, actually, you probably already are checking us out. So, anyways, um, <laughs> uh, we have a, if you've seen us on YouTube, we also have a website at www.rollingintentions.com. Uh, we also have an email at rollingintentions at gmail.com. Please send us crap, um, whatever you want, and also uh, comment below um, and subscribe. All that sort of stuff if you like what we do, and uh, we'll see you guys next week or two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if Nano Cordello wants to send an email to let us know who the hell you are, I mean, <laughs> <that'd be nice. laughs> thanks! <laughs> we are short on players. <laughs> we are short on players. Okay. All right. Until next time, stay groovy. All right. Cheers. All right. Peace out. <laughs>